Welcome you. We welcome you. We appreciate you. Thank you for the privilege you've given us to come and worship with us. At Ford Chapel, we never claim to be a perfect church, all right? Never claim to be a perfect church. By the way, if you are looking for a church, you find a perfect one, my advice to you, don't join it because you are going to mess it up. By the way, let me know also if there is one. We never consider ourselves a perfect church, but we consider ourselves an hospital. We are an hospital because we believe that there is someone who's able to cure us from our disease. My brothers and my sisters, we all have been infected and affected by a disease called the sin. Scripture says all have sinned and have come short from the glory of God. So God provided a cure. Christ died on the cross for our sins. And the blood of the Lamb is cleaning us from all unrighteousness. And through the miracle of the new birth, God is making us becoming new every day of our lives. So we join this fellowship as on our journey, coming to encourage one another. In fact, we are in this time of Lent, the 40 days before the Passover. And we are studying uh, the purpose-driven life. And today is day, today is day, come on, come on, day 12, all right. Yeah, 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 today is day 12. And uh, what is the lesson for today? You have not yet done your devotion? Come on, come on. All right, number 12 is developing your friendship with God. 11 was what? Friendship with God. Yes. All right, so, no, you, 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 can, you can consult your note. I know, I, I, I know someone is afraid to cheat. I'm not going to say you have cheated. <laughs> you, you are just consulting your note. I remember when I used to be a student, uh, a professor used to tell us that if you copy from only one source, that is plagiarism. But if you copy from multiple sources, is research. <laughs> all right, all right. By the way, my brothers and my sisters who worship with us online, thank you for the privilege you have given us to come to your house. We bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, if you do not mind, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of our heart all together be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength, God, our Redeemer. We submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the authority of your word. Come and speak to us. Encourage us in Jesus' name. Let all of God's people say amen. amen. So today I'm going to minister to you on this subject, living for the glory of God. Living for God's glory. We were created for God, for God's pleasure. It's all about God. It's all about God, not about you, not about us. In fact, the challenge, even to realize, even the prayers that we pray, is not about us. It's just about God. And when our prayers meet the will of God, God answers our prayers. I love the scripture that says, give thanks in every circumstances. How many times we give thanks to God for prayers that have been answered? We must also give praise to God for prayer that have not been answered. Come on, somebody. For the prayer that God did not answer, we say, God, we praise you because you did not answer that prayer. And I have shared with you how many times some prayers that were not answered, they were for good. There are things that, if you are honest with me, there are things that you and I wanted in our lives. And if God had given us those things, maybe those things would have not become a blessings for us. So we thank God for the prayer that have been answered. We thank God for the prayer that are yet to be answered. And we thank God for the prayers that have not yet been answered. Christianity is a movement of faith. It is a movement of surrender. If we are going to live for the glory of God, we start by acknowledging our total dependence on God. That is humility, my brothers and my sisters. If we are going to live for God's glory, we must learn to live with humility. Humility in this context is to acknowledge 
uh, dependence and recognition that we are nothing without God. That everything I am and everything I shall become is by grace alone. Everything has been given to me by God. Even my being this morning, if it had not been God giving me the opportunity to be alive, I would not be here. Whatever you are, whatever you have accomplished, when you look yourself in the mirror, how beautiful you are, how handsome you are, is a product of the grace of God. There's nothing you have done. Life is a gift from God. And I know one of the challenge, many times we take things for granted because we don't even count our blessings. Many times we focus on the things that don't work in our lives. We, we don't acknowledge the blessings of God. We, we are more concerned about what we have lost. We are more concerned about our grief. We are more concerned about our disappointment as sometimes we miss the point of life. Because you see, when we live with this notion of dependency on God, when, when, when we build that notion in us that I depend on God, my humility also teaches me to say, God, you are right in everything that you have done. Christ taught us in our prayer to say, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 8 through 9, God is saying to Israel, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. Inasmuch as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways, so are my thoughts. Like I said, Christianity is a movement of faith, is a movement of Humility, where we acknowledge our total dependence on God. And because we are humble to acknowledge our total dependence on God, so we strive to try to know God more and more. If there is something that will give glory to God, if we are going to live for the glory of God, is to try to know God more and more. There is nothing that brings glory to God when people seek God, seek to know God better. It brings God glory. When we know God for who God is, when we know God, we worship God, we give God the place that is due to God. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, sin is a rejection. Sin is a rejection. When people sin, they say, no, we are going to find satisfaction in our sinful lifestyle. But you know, when we are humbled before God, when we seek to know God, we are saying we are going to avoid satisfaction through our sinful lifestyle. We are going to adjust our life. We are going to submit to what God wants us to become. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, through our actions, through our way of living, we give glory to God. Remember, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, you are the light of the world. Like the city on a hilltop, you are the light of the world. Like a lamp, yes, let your good work be known by everyone so that your heavenly Father may be glorified. Our lifestyle, when we avoid satisfaction through sinful lifestyle, we give glory to God. And that will require humility on our side. Why do we need humility? Because you see, without humility, we cannot even acknowledge our sin. Humility is very important because only humble people say they are sorry. Come on, somebody. Can I be real with you this morning? It's only humble people who acknowledge that they are wrong. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me for what I've done. Without humility, there will be no true repentance. If we are going to live a life that gives glory to God, we must reclaim this godly habit, building that character of humility Oh, my brothers and my sisters, this habit, you know, of humility where we say we are going to desire God, we are going to need God. God, I need you, I need you, I need you. I need you. I need you. I want to know you more and more. And the more we know God, we apply scripture in Matthew chapter 6. Jesus said, store up for yourself treasure in heaven. 
Try to know God more and more. Realizing that our life here on earth is an assignment. To live is to prepare for eternity. That we are not here to stay. That we are not going to get caught up into the things of the world and we miss the point. Here on earth, my brothers and my sisters, there will be things that we are going to accomplish, but there will be things that we will not be able to accomplish. Our greatest appointment with destiny, our greatest assignment is to please God. Bringing glory to God is our highest priority. That's what it is. Pleasing God. Our highest priority. So if we are going to live for God's glory, number one, we must learn to acquire this humility. You know, practice humility in our lives. Acknowledging our total dependence on God. And stop lying to ourselves that we can do it without God. See, many times we lie to ourselves. That we can do it without God. So there are things that I want to bring to our attention. If we are going to live for God's glory. Not only we need that humility. Seeking God to try to know God more and more. Avoiding satisfaction through sinful lifestyle. The other things that bring glory to God is when we as God's people become an extension of God's presence in the world. And a one practical example of becoming an extension of God's presence in the world is through forgiveness. 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 Forgiving others as God has forgiven us. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ has forgiven you. Just as Christ has forgiven you. Matthew says, if you do not forgive others, God will not forgive you. You know, for us, many of us, God's people, it is easy for us to ask for forgiveness than to give forgiveness. Many of us. We are ready to ask for forgiveness, but are not willing to extend our forgiveness to others. If we are going to live for the glory of God, we must become an extension of God's presence in the world. And how do we do that? By extending, offering forgiveness to one another. We must let go. All justify Resentment. The grudges that we hold. My brothers and my sisters, we must embrace the spirit of reconciliation and the spirit of grace and understanding. In our marriages, we need to forgive one another. Wife and husband need to learn to forgive one another. I'm going to tell you something to help you see if you have forgiven given your spouse. There was a woman who was pregnant and she loved Chinese food. She loved the Chinese buffet. I know some of you say preacher is too early to talk about the buffet. She loved Chinese buffet so much that when she was pregnant she wants to eat. And, you know, pregnancy sometimes can come with a lot of challenge. And then, you know, so the husband was trying to help her to balance, you know, eating and all this stuff. And that day they were passing through a Chinese buffet. And this woman says, stop so we can eat. The husband said, no, 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 no. You know, uh, we are going to eat uh, something else. And he passed by. And she just was not happy. She was so mad with the husband. And they went and they ate something else. They went home and. Go home, she said to the husband, I was hurt. What you did, I did not like. You did not stop by the Chinese buffet. The husband said, I'm sorry, baby. Days pass, years pass. Then after five years, another problem just arrived. They were arguing. And she said to the husband, this 
this is what you always do. You remember that day I was pregnant with our first child. You passed by the Chinese buffet. You did not stop. And the husband said, all these years, you have been keeping the grudges against me for the Chinese buffet. I'm going to take you today to the Chinese buffet. So, 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 so. Forgiveness, my brothers and my sisters, is important. Now, I know there are people who will say, I will forgive, but I will not forget. That's another dimension. There are people who say, no, I will forgive, but I will not forget. But if you are always going to go back to drink from the well of the pain and the hurt, that, uh, the words, the, uh, the hurts that have been done to you, if you go back and drink from that well, how are you going to move on? I believe in that place of forgiveness, there must be some room for forgetting. Because even scripture encourages us to forget the former things. God says, forget the past. Yes, my brothers and my sisters. Every time I went into my past to remember the things that have been done to me, the pain, you, 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 you bring them live. Uh-uh. Christ says something powerful. He said to the disciple, you are going to do this at the Lord's table. Do this in remembrance. There is something in the memory, remembering. So in our forgiveness, there must be room for forgetfulness. We need to forget. That way, when we remember, we don't remember the hurt that has been done. And by the way, when you forgive, you release yourself. You are setting yourself free. The people that you forgive, they don't deserve your forgiveness. Some of them are not even sorry. They don't deserve your forgiveness. And I know, as a human being, you wish them, you wish them bad stuff to happen to them. If you have an experience when you heard something bad happen to someone who hurt you, come on, come on, let's be real. I know we are in church. Don't you feel good? Ah, come on, somebody. I know we are in church. Don't try to be holy. If you heard that something bad happened to someone who did wrong to you, you say, mm-hmm, karma. Yes. It's catching up with you. There is some kind of rejoicing. We rejoice when the people that have done something wrong to us are kind of going through some pain and we feel like they are paying for their mistake. But that should not be our place. God is the judge. God is the judge. We are to let God take care of that. On our side, we are to offer our forgiveness, to forgive like God has forgiven us. So be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Yes, how we all need that forgiveness from the Lord. Ah, guys, without God's forgiveness, I will not be able to stand here. Every day I experience the forgiveness of God. Because the more I come into the presence of God, the more I realize how unholy I am. That's something that happened. The more you come into the presence of God, the more you discover how unholy you are. Isaiah saw the Lord in the presence of God. He realized I'm a sinner. You cannot come into the presence of God in the light and not discovering who you are. Oh, yes, my brothers and my sisters. It's like looking at yourself into the mirror. But thanks be to God. Paul say we are transformed in the same image as unto the Lord. God has forgiven us. We too must extend our forgiveness to one another, to our brothers and our sisters. As the Holy Spirit is helping us to let go of those resentment, the grudges. Oh, yes, we are embracing the spirit of grace the spirit of understanding, we are embracing that because these are God's attribute. Yes, compassion, forgiveness is one of God's attribute and we who are called the children of God must extend our forgiveness. So wherever you are, with your neighbors, your co-workers, you know there are people that you just need to look at them in the eyes and say, hey guys, I forgive you. And sometimes forgiveness starts with that spirit of humility to say, hey man, if I've done anything, forgive me. I want peace to prevail. Scripture says, if it depends on you, be at peace with everyone. It's a call. We are called to be at peace with everyone. So as we are building that culture, 
of friendship with God. We are living for God's glory. We are humbling ourselves before the Lord. We are seeking to know God more and more. And we are becoming extension of God's presence in the world. We are becoming the light of the world. And one of the things that we can do to be the light of the world, a practical example, is to extend our forgiveness to those who offended us. Be kind. Forgive one another. In Christ as God has forgiven you. So not only we will give glory to God when we seek God more and more in our lives, when we build that godly habit of humility, when we extend our forgiveness to one another, there are the things I want you to know when we live for the glory of God. We, we must learn to trust God, trusting God. Like I said before, Christianity is a movement of faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith in God, trusting God, means that we believe the promises of God. We believe the things that God has said. We trust God, that God's sovereign control is over our life. God is all-knowing. God is all-powerful. We know all that. God can do anything God wants. God may change something in our lives. God may intervene to do something. God may not intervene. God may answer our prayers. God may not answer our prayers. But because we trust in the Lord, my brothers and my sisters, we give glory to God when in the midst of our circumstances, we give glory to God. You know, when we apply Romans chapter 8, verse 28, all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. You know, sometimes this scripture is so challenging. How will my pain, how will my grief, my loss, how? How will these things give glory to God? I told you, in the Christian faith, we don't focus on why these things happen to me. The why question is a genuine question, is a normal question to ask why. But you see, when we ask why, for us who believe, it's not for us to reject God or doubt the word of God. When we ask why, it's for us to move into the direction of how. From why to how. When I ask, why is this happening to me? Then I begin to trust God and say, how will this situation give glory to God? How will my pain, my grief give glory to God? Yes, my brothers and my sisters, can we still sustain our faith and say we are going to trust God even when we do not understand? Can we still trust God and give God the glory when we don't have the answers that we do not have? Yes, Scripture says, whether we eat, whether we drink, whatever we do, we must do these things for the glory of God. Another emphasis is on this First Thessalonians Scriptures. Give thanks in everything, in every circumstances. You know, this is... You know, this scripture, I, I paused for a while when I was uh, meditating. Give thanks in everything, for it is the will of God for us to give thanks to God. You, you, you know, my brothers and my sisters, when we learn to accept not having the answers, when we learn to accept that we don't have control over what we desire, when we acknowledge that God has the last word, God decides whatever God wants, there is a scripture says in the book, uh, in the Old Testament, where it says people are asking, where is God? And, and, and the psalmist is singing, David is saying, God is on the throne doing whatever God wants to do. This is why my brothers and my sisters, people like Job understood that I may lose everything, but at the end I will still give glory to God. Because I know my Redeemer lives. Yes, we must learn to give thanks to God in every circumstances. 
Come on, somebody. I'm losing. Yes, God, I give you thanks for my defeat. You know, sometimes we only give thanks to God for our victory. God, I want this job. Give me the grace to have the job. Go for the interview, and I was not given the job. You come out of the, that place, you say, Lord, I give you thanks. Because I did not pass. I did not succeed. You did not give this me, this one. I know you have something better for me. I may not know what it is, but I know you have something better. Now, it's easy to say these things. But in reality, it's tough. It is tough. What if I lose my child? My only child that I have. When I was chaplain at Huntsville Hospital, one of the challenging places to be was the children's hospital. It will be too late in the night. They will call, page me, chaplain, come. And you get there and you find a woman crying. It's my only child. Five times I had miscarriage and we have this baby. And the baby is two years old and the baby died. What are you going to tell that woman? It's scripture says, give thanks in every circumstances. That's crazy. Yes, it sounds stupid. It sounds crazy, but that's the faith we have. That's the movement we belong. It's like driving your car, a four by four, on an off road. You, you know, not all cars are the same. There are some cars that are just two wheels drive. And you can only drive on a good terrain. But when you are off the road and this car stuck, you are not able to get out. You know, there are those who will tell you when you drive a four by four, that car is able to take you out from whatever you may find yourself. I think this is a small illustration that can illustrate our faith. Our faith is like driving that four by four. Yes, when the front wheel is stuck, you can still put the gear into reverse and get out of the ditch because you have that capability to move out. When you belong to God, when, when you live for God's glory, you are like driving a four by four. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, when life stuck, one wheel stuck in something, you are still able to move. Yes, I will cry. Yes, I will grieve. But my grief, I will still look to God. I will still look up to the hill where my help comes. And my help comes from the Lord. I am not defeated. I am not a victim of my circumstances. I may have to cry sometime, but I know my Redeemer lives. I can still stand. I cry for a while, but I know my God is still on the throne. I'm not defeated. Living for God's glory is to acknowledge every day that God is on our side. And it is true, I will never doubt that the Lord is not on my side because of my circumstances. Even when my situation is bad, I will encourage myself. I will say I am not defeated. So don't live your life like someone who is a victim of your circumstances. You are not defeated. You are not defeated. Amen. You may be in a very tough spot. Yes, I understand. You may be against the wall. Yes, I understand. You may find yourself in a hard place, but that does not change the fact that God promised, I will always be with you. Our living, our dying, we give glory to God. For we, indeed we know our lives. We've been created for God, for God's pleasure, and whatever we do, we do it for the glory of God. Yes, this is why even when we go to work, we work willingly at whatever we do as though we are working for the Lord. Look here. Scripture encourages us and says, remember, everything you do, do it as unto the Lord. Come on. You go to work, you are motivated, not because of your check, 
but you are motivated because you are working for the Lord. Wherever, whatever you are doing, wherever you are going, you are motivated because whatever you do, you want to give God the glory. Yes, you don't need to cheat on your employer because you are doing it as unto the Lord. And the Bible says, Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 15 verse 8, when you produce much fruit, you are my disciples. And this brings great glory to my Father. Oh yes, my brothers and my sisters, as we realize that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we are living in this body. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. We are not here to try to win the approval of people. But we are here to please God. And how do we do that? As we surrender. God, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. When we surrender, it's not a very good experience. Can I get a witness? In the word surrender, uh, uh, it's just that place, I'm overwhelmed, I don't want to do this, but I know somehow this is the best option. And by the way, I want us to realize, I want us to realize God is not the almighty bully, is not the almighty dictator. We are not dealing with a bully who's just doing stuff to us and who's ready to beat us down when we do something wrong. No, God is not like that. God is a loving parent. A loving parent. A loving parent. God is a loving parent. We are dealing with somebody who loves us. Who loves us. All right? Who loves us. Our circumstances may not speak about that, but that's the truth. This is why David says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for I know thou art with me. All right? Come on, the baby is telling me, Preacher, it's done. You are done for today. Good job, baby. All right. To God be the glory. So uh, we, we, we thank God. I, I, I hope as, as, as we are living our life here uh, on earth during this uh, time, especially during this time of uh, the 40 days of preparation, uh, those of you who want to join us, we are reading the Purpose Driven uh, 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 book by Rick Warren. Uh, tomorrow is going to be day uh, 13. Uh, so join us. It's not late. Let's continue to read. And, and as we come together, you know, take time to reflect you know, and pray. Take some time to just give yourself permission. What are the things that God wants to change in my life? What are the new perspectives that God is giving me? From the very first day we started this study, I have learned something interesting. When I learn, it's not about me. I've learned something. It's not about me. Even the prayers that I pray, God has told me it's not about you. I did not like that, but that's the truth. It's not about me. It's about God. Because I too spend a lot of time reflecting, God, why you did not answer this prayer? God, why you did not do this? God, why you did not do this? God, why, why, why? And I'm sleeping there. And then I'm reading this book. It says, it's not about you. I was mad. I closed the book. Throw it away. For a little while. It's not about you. It is all about God. It is all about God. God knows what is best for us. So we surrender to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let all of God's people say amen. And the band.